All right, for this one, we're going to go through creating a form uh, in Google Forms to be used for assessment purposes uh, when creating your rubrics. Um, and so what you need to do is get into your drive, your Google Drive. And if you're not there, if you're in your email, just go up to these little boxes here, click on those boxes, and then go to Drive. So once you get to your drive, all you have to do is go to Create, and we're going to create a form. So we click on that. And now it sends us uh, to this page. Feel free to choose whatever theme you want. This can always be changed. Click OK. Now, as you're creating your form, the first thing you want to look at is your form settings up here. And so if you're part of a domain, a school domain, just like this one is, this is saying to require Montevideo Public Schools login to view this form. A lot of times I'll just unclick that. Otherwise, it just makes it another step or something else to be able to log in. So just make sure that's unchecked. And then I always just make sure those other three, all the other two are unchecked as well. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, title this. And so this is going to be my my informational text rubric form. Okay. Now, as you go into it, the one thing you've got to remember is that you should have a plan on what do you want to put on this form. And so if we were to go back and take a look at an example of one, uh, this is one that I have created, and it looks like this. And so what I've done is I've put identifying information up top here, so a student, um, a student name, and just a lot quicker to already have them in there, otherwise you've got to type their name and things like that. And I do it as a checkbox question. I do that because now I can select multiple students. And then any other identifying information that you need, whether or not it's section, hour, class, something like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our form, our editing form. And so we're going to go type in student name. Now here, we want to change the question type. So you see question type, we change that to check boxes. And so we can type in um, our student names here, whether or not they're alphabetical. Um, and so you can type in whatever names uh, you want there of your students. And then we can choose done. Um, if you want to, you can make it a required question. That way you don't forget to select uh, the student's name. Uh, it's never really a bad thing probably to put that on. So then we hit done. Then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to choose add an item. And I'm going to choose uh, a choose from a list. So what this is going to do is going to be a drop down menu. And on this one, I'm just going to put section, and this is section 1, or section 2, and again, required, done. That way it just lets me filter even a little bit further if I want to when I filter in my spreadsheet. Now I need to get to my learning targets in my rubric, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up a little bit by adding a section header. So I go to add item over here to the layout portion and hit section header. And right here I'm just going to type in the word learning targets or learning objectives or whatever you choose to do. So what that does is just breaks it up a little bit. So if I go to view live form, what you can see is now that's a heading just like you have up here. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add an item. And you can do this a couple ways. If you want to add it as either choose from a list or a multiple choice, it makes no difference to you depending on how much space you want to take up. Um, but I'm going to do multiple choice. And these are going to be my learning targets underneath here. And so for sake of time, I'm just going to go learning target 1, learning target 2, and so on here. Okay, 
And again, make it required so I can't submit the form without it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a multiple choice or choose from a list, whichever you, cho whichever you choose. And this will be my rubric information. So now I have four, three, two, one. And if you want to add, um, you know, you know, your exceeds, meets, partial, and whatever you want to do. I mean, whatever your words are, there you can add that as well. And again, make that required so you can't submit it without it. Now I can hit done. And what my form looks like now is it looks like this. And so what I can do is I can, as I'm watching a student, I can select Tom Brown and Jane Doe. They're in section one. They're working on learning target two, and they both are exceeding. I can hit submit. Okay. And let's do another example. Let's say Tom and Brandon, they're in section one. They're working on learning target three, and they are partial. So I can hit submit. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a couple here so you can see um, what it looks like in your spreadsheet. Okay. Now in my form, you probably will have something here that says select destination or response destination. Make sure you just click that and then it's just saying, do I want to put it on a new sheet and then click OK. I don't have that because um, I chose not to have that on. Mine always just go to a new sheet. And so uh, you might have that there in order to get your responses into your spreadsheet. So just make sure that that um, is clicked. If that does not save you a response to something else, click on it and then just click OK. And then what you'll get, you'll get a spreadsheet. And so now I have informational text rubric form responses. So if I click on that, what I'm going to see is all my responses. Okay. And so video number two will show you how to go through Google spreadsheets to conditionally format and filter.